。内塔尼亚胡拒绝访美，奥巴马政府与以色列再生嫌隙。Not all leaders always. Bond. Not all of them get along. There are different personalities. 犹太人一个能影响华府决策、掌握世界经济命脉的群体，他们跟民主党派之间有着怎样的联系？大选结果又将如何影响中美关系 ？American foreign policy is returning to the Asia Pacific was initially brought up by Hillary Clinton herself. 专访美国犹太议会主席杰克罗森。大家好，欢迎收看《风云对话》，我是朴小田。今天我们这期节目的录制地点是在美国纽约，节目嘉宾是美国犹太议会主席杰克罗森先生。二零一六年是美国大学年驴象之间的拉锯即将上演。在美国有一种或许比较夸张的说法，说美国操控着世界，而犹太人操控着美国。说犹太人在美国不仅控制着华尔街，还控制着华盛顿。犹太人在美国所占的人口比例不到百分之三，却掌握着超过百分之七十的财富。今天我们的节目嘉宾就是这样一个神秘团体的翘楚，我们要请他为我们谈一下美国犹太人和美国政治的关系，和美国民主党派的关系，奥巴马政府和以色列的关系，以及在他眼中中美两国未来的关系。杰克罗森出生于战后德国难民营，是大屠杀幸存者的后代。除了担任犹太人理事会主席、美国犹太议会主席。杰克罗森还是一位成功的企业家，他身兼不同行业的总裁、首席执行官和跨国公司主席等职，被舆论称为当今美国最有影响力的五位犹太人之一。Good morning, Mr. Rosen. Thank you for being with us today. Well, good morning to you as well. Welcome to New York, and appreciate the opportunity to speak to you and your audience. Thank you, Mr. Rosen. So you are the chairman of American Jewish Congress and also the American Council for World Jewry. That's right. Right. I visited the website and I, I find it quite interesting because it said that the American Jewish Congress is having had deep and abiding commitment to ensure the survival of Israel and protecting Jewish communities around the world. So, in which ways you're trying to do this? Well, you know, Jewish communities, much like the Chinese, have had a long history of needing to protect their their communities. You know, starting after World War II and before that, but You know, we all remember the Holocaust, and、uh, we're certainly all appreciative in the Jewish community what China has done for Jews throughout its history. You know, in protecting Jews who are fleeing from you know the Holocaust. But I, I think if you look around the world,、uh, Israel is consistently under attack. Although it is the only democracy in the Middle East, and、uh, it, it gives it you know has shared values with, with much of the Western world, and, and including China. Uh, it, uh, is, it continues to be under attack by the world community. You think this is still the case even It's today? It's definitely still the case. So, in which ways you are actually doing to fight against this situation? So, one, we, we we do try to communicate the true story of Israel. We do that in many ways.、Uh, we get to know some leaders around the world, including many Chinese leaders, and make the case. We、um, bring leadership from around the world to Israel. Just recently, in a mayor's conference that we have each year in Israel, there, there's some representatives from Beijing who came、uh, this past year and the year before.、Um, we,、uh, you know, maintain a dialogue, and then we also battle those that are confronting Israel right, against、so、the boycott movement. It's through communication. Well, it's communication, but it's also by, you know, action. As you know, there's a big question of、uh, the Iran nuclear deal that was recently reached. And、uh, many of us in community fought that deal. The result of which is, although the deal has been completed, still much of what we said was taken into consideration. So you mean the efforts have had a result? Yes, absolutely. Right. In, in which ways? So can you be more specific on this? Well, in, in, in some ways, when it you know when it comes to Iran, the Iran nuclear deal, our input, our criticism of components of the deal were taken、mm-hmm. into account. And the terms of the deal were negotiated.、Uh, that I think realized, you know, took into account the fact that there are many Americans, not only Jewish Americans, but、mm-hmm. many Americans who are very much concerned about、mm-hmm. potentially seeing a nuclear Iran. And、uh, so, you know, our our points of view. So you're saying that the, the American Jewish community is not entirely happy about the results of that. Many Americans are not happy with it. You see that today in our presidential. Is, is you know, there any the plan、conflict. that you are going to keep fighting against it? I don't think、uh, we're, we're going to fight 
you know, the, the, the deal itself at the moment. But I think we'll keep a watchful eye and make mm -hmm. sure that Iran adheres to the deal, make sure that they don't get nuclear capability. 自一九五零年起，美国便一直是以色列的头号盟友，并给以色列提供上千亿美元的巨额援助。然而，自奥巴马上任以来，美以两国就多次在巴以冲突、伊核等问题上意见分歧。奥巴马与内塔尼亚胡两人之间的嫌隙颇深，也早已不是秘密。美国白宫于当地时间三月七日称，以色列总理内塔尼亚胡拒绝了在本月晚些时候同美国总统奥巴马会面的邀请。同时取消了对美国的访问。据外媒称，内塔尼亚胡取消访美是他与奥巴马关系尚未弥合的最新迹象。去年，内塔尼亚胡就曾绕过白宫，在美国国会发表批评伊核协议的演讲，令白宫颇为不快。So you have good relationship with President Obama. Can you please tell us how is really the relationship between President Obama and the Prime Minister Netanyahu? So I know President Obama. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, uh, he actually visited you once at your home. That's right. He, he's been at my home. Mm -hmm. uh, I see him. Um, and uh, the, look, the, the relationship uh, between Israel and, and and America continues to be a very strong, friendly relationship between the two countries. I think there are different points of view on some issues that Obama, President Obama, has with Prime Minister Netanyahu. So let me first state what support President Obama has given to Israel. There's been no president who's given more military support to Israel than President Obama and security on the defensive needs of Israel than President Obama. There's been no president who's given more support in his technology uh, uh, you know, capability than President Obama. Uh, on the other hand, the president disagrees with Israel on the question, on the question of how to somehow complete an Israeli-Palestinian peace deal. And there, there's a big disagreement. And I think there's, a, there's also a question of personalities. Not all leaders, you know, always bond. Not all of them get along. There are different personalities in the world. We found that in the past with Chinese leaders and American leaders, some of whom, you know, have seemed to have gotten together in a very strong relationship, others who didn't. So that relationship might be problematic, but I can tell you that it has no impact on American support for Israel. Yeah, you see, American Jewish, the traditionally speaking, they support the Democratic Party, right? right? But there's a tendency noticed in recent years. For example, there's a figure shown by the Gallup poll, and in 2015, 61% of Jews identify themselves as Democrats, and this figure is down from 71% in 2008. And on the other hand, in 2015, the number of the, uh, the percentage of Jews who identify themselves as a Republican was 29. Well, compared seven years ago, it was only 22%. So there's sort of like a tendency that the American Jews are swinging towards the right. So what is the reason? Well, I, I would question those statistics. Um, if you look at history, you, you see throughout the history, uh, you know, recent history, uh, Jews have supported democratic, mm. uh, you know, political figures. President Obama received over 70 percent of the Jewish vote in America, and he, by many in the community, is considered not to be the best friend of Israel sometimes. Mm -hmm. I think it, it's mistaken, but that is something that people think. On the other hand, President Bush, who was perceived to be one of the best friends that Israel ever had, only received approximately 60 percent of the Jewish vote. Uh, I, I, I think, you know, it's, it's clear that, uh, uh, that maybe the Jewish community, as it becomes more successful, as it moves, you know, into, you know, uh, larger uh, participation in, in the political process and the business community, uh, tends to be becoming a little bit more conservative. Um, and on some major issues that are critical, like Iran, uh, the Republicans have, you know, have taken a much stronger position against Iran than Democrats. So we find moments where there's a shift. This might be one of those moments because of Iran, because of the, the relationship with uh, Netanyahu and Obama that hasn't gone so well. So you, I, I think you, the you, real, you think yeah, the real this? number you should look at is, is, is that President Bush, best friend of Israel, received 60 percent of the vote. President Obama, who's perceived by many not to be at least Bibi Netanyahu's best friend, receives over 70. In short, do you think this kind of tendency has something to do with the relationship between uh, Bibi Netanyahu and uh, Barack Obama? 
I assume to some extent, yes. 今年是美国大选年，而此次民主党候选人呼声最高的希拉里·克林顿与杰克·罗森算得上是老相识了。You have had a good relationship with several American presidents, and Bill Clinton is one of them, probably you know the best of. And you were showing your support to him while he's running against the senior Bush while in the 90s. So now Hillary Clinton is running for the president. Are you also showing your support for her? Yes, uh, you know the Clintons have been friends of mine since the 1980s. Um, uh, well, do, you, do you still remember the first time you met her, Hillary Clinton, and what was the impression you had? So uh, I knew them both when they lived in Arkansas, when Bill Clinton was the governor of Arkansas. Um, I met her first at their home in Arkansas. Actually, that's the first time I met her. Uh, I got to know her. The Clintons uh, and I and the fa our family have joined a, uh, you know, enjoyed a good relationship. Um, when he ran for president the first time, uh, Bill Clinton used my airplane to fly around at the time, and so did Hillary at the time. Um, so we've continued that strong relationship, and it, you know they've been at my house many times. Uh, Apart from uh, lending uh, Bill Clinton your airplane, what other supports are you offered? Well, I've supported him by helping him raise funds. Uh, I uh, chaired a committee in, in the Democratic Party at the time he was president. You know, we I've supported him publicly and you know in many of his policies um, during his years as the president. All right. Then how about now? How are you supporting Hillary Clinton? I I support her and you know uh, expect that she'll run for president. Uh, uh, American Jewish Congress honored her just a year and a half ago. We gave her an honor and award. She was at our our function and. Uh, she continues to be, you know, yeah, but close how, friend. How's the relationship, or how's, yeah, how's Hillary Clinton really perceived by American Jewish community? I heard that there's some kind of a crisis that uh, she once had with the uh, Jewish community in America because of a kiss that uh, she gave to um, some Arab lady, was it? When she met Yasser Arafat's wife, mm -hmm. uh, she, you know, I think gave her a kiss you know, something that we all would take for granted as being a way of saying hello, you know. Mm -hmm. As you know, many people, you know, kiss each other on the cheek when they first say hello. Mm -hmm. And uh, so she, she, she was con criticized by some in the Jewish community. But she wasn't a politician at the time. Uh, she probably wasn't looking at it from a political standpoint. And I think she just, you know, did mm -hmm. what she thought was a proper way of addressing somebody the first time that they met. Um, it was, you know, that, that concern quickly, uh, you know, went away and she had full support of the Jewish community uh, when she ran for U.S. Senator in New York after that. And does she have the full support from the Jewish community now while she's running? I think she has, you know, the majority support from the Jewish community, yes. I, I don't think there's many in the Jewish community who wouldn't, wouldn't support her on the question of Israel or, or uh, you know, issues that are important to Jews. Um, you know, I think when you sit, when you ask about support that Democrats have from Jews, it's not so much because of, you know the, the issues surrounding Israel. It's mostly about you know the kind of country that Americans want to see. Jews have always been very supportive of, of you know supporting social networks in 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 America and around the world. We have a concept called tikkum olam, which is a word that means that. We try to help people all over the world. We often think that as a minority, if we help others, you know, gain their rights and their freedoms, we as a minority also gain the same rights and freedoms. Thank you.
。这种夸张的说法并非空穴来风。美国犹太人用很多方式参与影响政治。然而，美国前国防部长哈格尔在早前接受专访时曾毫不讳言地指出，美国的主要犹太游说集团威胁了国会山上的很多人。You know, the former、uh, Secretary of Defense,、uh, Hegel, once said something quite controversial. He said that the Jewish lobby is intimidating the Congress. So, how do you understand this? How, how powerful really is the Jewish lobby? I think on, is, on issues that relate to the Jewish community, which include domestic issues like you know, the freedoms that we all are, you know, stand up and fight for.、Um, Uh, civil liberties and equal rights and religious freedom on issues that internationally matter to the Jewish community, like Israel and Iran, we are extremely powerful because we we have a strong voice on those issues, and we have the support of a majority of Americans, non-Jewish Americans, on those issues.、Uh, on the other hand, on, on issues that don't relate to the things that I just mentioned,、uh, I don't know that we're any more powerful than any other group in America. But on our issues that we care about, that we fight for, and we struggle for,、um, we have a, a very, very strong voice. And you know, if you look at American government, quite often much of the leadership is Jewish.、Um, we represent a, you know, I think three percent of population. I think we have twelve out of one hundred U.S. senators are Jewish, which is twelve percent.、Mm -hmm. uh, when you look at、uh, the White House, Obama's White House, the, the top two, three officials with Had worked for President Obama, chief of staff, and some others were Jewish.、Uh, so we、oh, also in the Congress House, that is、uh, well, very well represented. Yes, but I think a lot of that is because,、um, you know, the, the Jews have, have have always taken an interest、um, in in political life, in the issues that government all often is engaged in. Um, you know, this has been our history.、Um, I often talk about what Chinese and, and Jews have in common. Well, what they have in common is education and family life and caring for their family.、Um, those are matters that involve government. You know, without government support, you don't have a good education system,、um, and without government support, usually the family infrastructure isn't as strong. So we engage in, in, in political action. We engage in government. We, we, you know, we're, we're thought leaders. 美国总统大选正进入初选的冲刺阶段。目前，民主党候选人希拉里和共和党候选人特朗普分别在争取党内提名中取得领先优势。大选期间，参选人在经济、外交政策议题上不免会涉及到中国。目前，中美两国在南海、网络安全和全球贸易等方面仍存在摩擦。特朗普在选举期间也曾威胁要在贸易上教训中国。与此同时，在三月十六日，国务院举行的答中外记者问的记者会上，李克强总理在回答美国记者提问时表示，不管美国谁当总统，中美关系发展不受影响。这也是中国领导层首次谈及美国总统选举的话题。Then how do you think of the future China-America relationship? So that's the big question mark.、Mm -hmm. um, you know, it is the most important bilateral relationship in the world. Uh, depending on, on which direction it goes,、uh, I think we'll, we can see different levels of volatility、mm -hmm. in, in the world. And I think that that discussion is taking place today in our, you know, presidential campaign.、Mm -hmm. Some of the leading, you know, political figures that, that are candidates in the campaign,、uh, Donald Trump,、uh, mm -hmm. is the example that you all hear about,、um, have. You know, taking a position about the U.S.-China relationship that is troublesome. Donald Trump is going to move all the factories back to America. Look, I, I think there's two things. One, Donald Trump, I think, is is、uh, proposing、um, a a new, different, and a different engagement in in world affairs.、Uh, you know, he, he's proposing unilateral. Do you know him personally? Yes. Donald Trump. Yes.、Uh, how, how is he like in real life? You know, pompous and egotistical. So he's just、person. showing his normal self. Yes. Yes. So, <laughs> I know. You know. He's a fun person to be with, at least. But you know, he's proposing a, a different engagement with the world. You know, unilateralism. He's suggesting that if Americans don't get something in return on their foreign foreign policy initiatives, then America should pass on that. 
Americans are, are buying into this. You know, we have spent many years being the policemen of the world and fighting wars for everybody else, Iraq, Syria, Libya, um, even Russia. Mm -hmm. And Americans are tired because we turn around and say, what do we get for it? Americans have seen China rise, and it's been to America's benefit and the world's benefit to see China rise, mm -hmm. okay, and to have a, a calm, competitive relationship with China. But, it, you know, the result of that also has been that, you know, China has had an advantage. The currency is an example, and uh, the cheap labor market over the years has been an example. And it was, you know, we all thought it was to our benefit to see a stronger China. So now many Americans are sitting back and saying, well, wait a minute, what do we get for this on these trade policies and other engagement? So the big question on this most important relationship of the world is, are we going to be antagonists or are we going to be friendly competitors? Mm -hmm. If we're antagonists, then the world order will be troubled by that. If Trump mm -hmm. were to succeed in his unilateralism, for it to get out sometimes, mm -hmm. um, then I think America will leave the world to itself and there will be much more chaos. Yeah. You know, a lot of things that we step in and try to solve, who's going to solve them? You know, what if Hillary Clinton wins? I think if Hillary Clinton wins, she will continue the policies that have been in effect, you know, for many years now through many presidents, which is, uh, you know, continue to engage the world, continue to you know, participate in, uh, in, in, in policies where the world, the global, you know, uh, you know. But the American foreign policy is uh, returning to the Asia Pacific was initially brought up by Hillary Clinton herself. Well, we, we have spent many years focusing on the Middle East and some other problem areas. And those, are, those problems are, are, are minor compared to the potential, you know, engagement and possible problems in, in Asia. So I think the focus is to make sure that, you know, we work together with the, you know, the Asian region to uh, have a peaceful, competitive, uh, you know, community with economic growth. And as I said, I think what hasn't been answered yet in the minds of many Americans and probably the Chinese is, you know, to what extent do, do, does the antagonism you know, uh, engage with friendly competitiveness. Um, and there are signs of both. And, uh, you know, the person who becomes president here is going to have a lot to say mm -hmm. about that future. 作为犹太群体的领袖，当然也作为克林顿夫妇多年的朋友，杰克罗森先生在采访中大方表态，在这一次的总统选举中，他将以各种形式，也包括筹款，支持希拉里竞选。在他看来，如果是希拉里出任总统，中美两国关系将得以平稳过渡；可如果是特朗普出任总统，或许会在美国民众中激起对中美两国关系的另一种思考。杰克罗森在采访里还指出，中国人和犹太人很多的相似之处。他说，两个族群都有着悠久的历史，都有很强的家庭观，也都很注重教育。现在的中国和以色列之间就有着巨大的合作潜力。身在美国，深度融入，同时关心支持以色列的发展，这也是杰克罗森先生在采访中给我的印象之一。感谢收看本期节目，我们下周见。